Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Roger Morgan. I'm the founder and CEO of Pawtree. And I'm here today with Miss Brooke Sloat. Hello, Brooke. Hi, Roger. Hi, everybody. As some of you are coming to know, if you've watched our Lunch and Learn in the past, Brooke is fabulous. She's our director of product development. And uh, I tell you what, there is a lot to learn from Brooke. So we all um, you know, sup from the cup, so to speak, at lunch, and we get to learn uh, at the, the feet of Brooke. And um, today is a great topic. I will tell you something. If you have a pet, you've probably dealt with some form of pet anxiety. Um, you may not even have known that's what it is. Sometimes we're oblivious to, you know, why our pets are behaving a certain way. Um, but today we're going to talk about pet anxiety. Brooke's got some great tips for us. Um, and I think the timing is excellent because with July 4th around the corner, you know, that actually is a time that uh, creates a lot of anxiety in, in, in uh, certainly a lot of pets. Not all pets, but Brooke will help us identify, you know, which ones and what we can do about it, whether it's for July 4th or any time a pet uh, is experiencing anxiety. Uh, Brooke's got some great, some great tips. So with that, Brooke, kick us off. Okay. All right, so this is perfect timing. Um, and for those of you who aren't aware, anxiety truly is a thing uh, for pets. Statistically, one in three dogs and cats suffer with feeling anxious during their lifetime, okay? So, you know, you may have several pets and some may suffer from anxiety and some may not. Some may suffer from ang certain anxieties and, you know, and others, they're fine. But we're gonna talk about all of them. So when they do have this anxiety, you'll see them pace and they'll pant and they'll shake uncontrollably and they'll drool and they'll, they'll try to hide and get away, you know, um, often under the bed. They just want to get away is, is, is what's going on right there. Interesting. So those are some of the symptoms. Let's, um, shall we start with maybe identifying some of the triggers? You know, I threw out there, you know, July 4th, there's a lot of reasons for that. You'll probably talk about that. Um, yeah. What are just to help us understand, you know, the kind of the breadth of what are the, the triggers that can cause anxiety for our pets? OK, so there, there are a number of them. OK, but the most common things that cause anxiety for our pets are things like noise, loud noises. <clears throat> Thunderstorms are a really big one. The noise from the thunder, as well as the change in barometric pressure that some pets actually feel before the storm arrives. So, you know, the, the sky might be clear or a little overcast and your dog will start pacing. I, mm -hmm. I have a dog that does this. Your dog will start pacing and panting and that's your trigger. That's when you know that there's a problem and there's a storm coming. Um, another one under noise is fireworks. Fireworks is actually really huge, you guys. Um, and this is why we're talking about this topic now. Because many pet parents don't realize how scary fireworks are for their BFFs. So we like fireworks, right? They're festive, they're fun, but unfortunately not so much for our four-legged friends. The loud pop, pop, pop of fireworks can be terrifying for some of our pets. Okay, so noise is, is a big one. Okay. Um, let's talk about something else called separation anxiety. Okay, so, and these, are things, really, these, these are so the, the triggers that cause anxiety, right? So yes. you got loud noises and now you said separation anxiety. Separation anxiety is another, we talked about noise, separation anxiety is another trigger. And what that is, um, is when you leave them to go out. So you leave them to go to work or you leave them to go out for a while to run errands or to go to dinner or something like that. Um, your pets may become destructive and they tear up furniture and they tear up pillows or scratch at walls or doors. They're not doing this to misbehave, okay? They're anxious about you leaving, their pack leader leaving. They're just trying to get to you, to protect you. That's what's happening. So they'll, a lot of times they'll try and get to the door in which they last saw you and you'll, you know, you'll see them, you know, that there's a lot of scratch marks at the door. That's what they're trying to do is, is, is find you. So separation anxiety is another one. Okay. Um, the next one we'll talk about is travel. Um, what I mean by travel is when you take them for rides in the car, they go for rides to the vet or to the groomer or to the dog park, or you know, there could be multiple places where you, where you drive them. 
Um, boarding them uh, when you go out of town. I put that under travel, but boarding yeah, them. Yeah, sure. Um, motion sickness in general, whether it's in a car, whether it's in plane, motion sickness is, is a big one too. Okay. Okay. That, that That's an interesting one. This travel one, I can just, it, you know, I don't really think of it as pet anxiety, but as you say that, you know, we don't take our, our dogs on long trips, but just even taking them to the park or something where I know they love to go to the park, but um, Jojo in particular, one of our two dogs, you know, we get her in the car. She wants to go. She's excited to go, but then I can tell she's very anxious. She barks kind of in that high pitched, like kind of nervous bark and, um, yeah. and is very anxious. Once we get there, you know, then she'll, so she'll settle down. That's, a, uh, that's interesting. Okay. Uh, I'm tracking with you. So travel is another kind of. I'm going to give you a hint about travel. Okay. Um, I'm not going to say that this is actually anxiety, but when you have, when a pet has anxiety, one of the things is they get nauseous. Okay. Mm -hmm. What I have found with small dogs. Okay. I, I have small dogs and what I have learned over the years is that, um, a lot of times small dogs will get sick in the car and why they're getting sick um, or what can stop the sickness. What's happening is the car, there's motion in the car. They know they're moving, but they can't see that they're moving. So they, so it's kind of a weird feeling for them. The thing that will fix that is a car seat. You elevate them so they can see out the window and the sickness stops. Nice. So just a hint, those are for, that's for small dogs who cannot see outside. They're getting motion sickness because they're feeling the movement of the car, but they don't understand what's exactly happening. Okay, excellent, good tip. So we've had more join us. If you've just joined us, we're talking about anxiety for pets. Um, we're kind of talking right now about the different triggers. We've talked about loud noises, bar barometric pressure, separation anxiety. Now we've been talking about travel. Are there any other triggers, Brooke, that create that kind of uh, anxiousness in pets? Yeah, there's there's a couple more um, that we'll talk about today. Uh, one of which is stranger anxiety. So what does that mean? So it's people, visitors in your home, um, an electrician, a plumber, someone who comes over, friends uh, who come over that your pets are just not used to, um, workers that come in or around your home, like a gardener outside, parties that you might have, lots of people. They're in your pet's home and your pet may be uncomfortable or anxious about all of these people you know, around, yeah. right? Um, so that's what we would call stranger anxiety. Okay. And then I'll talk about one more, which, um, I mean, it's, it's a thing, nail trims and baths. Um, <laughs> even nail trims and baths can be a source for anxiety for pets and actually for pet parents too. <laughs> so, um, but, but it is, it is a thing. If you ever tried to, to do either of these things with your pets, it can be, uh, an anxious moment. Well, that, that really, it's really interesting. I mean, I can, I personally, just with my own pet family can relate to almost all of those. So we, you're definitely hitting, kind of striking a chord uh, with me and my <laughs> experience. Uh, so tell us, so, so now we understand kind of the different triggers. Let's start to talk about solutions. You know, what can we do as pet parents to help our pets? Okay. So um, <clears throat> this is a known thing. So there are different things out there that people use to help their pets during these stressful times, right? So some people use um, what I'm calling tight clothing, um, clothing that applies pressure around their body, much like when you swaddle an infant, same type of, of feeling sure. or thought. Um, there are also diffusers with essential oils or pheromones. And of course, there are medications that you can give to your pets. So those are the main things I would say. And, and do those, I mean, in your experience and what you do, those things work? Um, <clears throat> some of these things work, but they also have their drawbacks. So medication often has side effects and many pet parents don't always want to give their pets chemical drugs all the time. Sure. Um, you know, what if, what if you're away from home at work and a storm, there's a storm that happens, right? You're not even there to medicate them. And once they get into that mode of pacing and panting and drooling and shaking, um, 
you really can't pill them at that point. It's it's game over. Um, okay, so the oils and the pheromones are only good if the pet stays in the room with the diffuser. Now, certainly pets, you know, need to get away also, you know, to go into other rooms, etc. But I'm just saying that <clears throat> those things work when the pet is present uh, near them. And um, how many hours do you want to keep something that, you know, tight clothing on your frightened pet? I mean, you can even can you even put the clothing on them once they're already frightened? I do have trouble with that with our, our dog who gets anxious. It's true. Yeah. So, so I hear you. I mean, it, it sounds like, you know, and this is a topic, obviously it's very, um, you know, prevalent out, you know, among pet owners. So there are a lot of different solutions and, and the ones that you've suggested, they all have pros. They all, you know, potentially have some cons, but they do work. It just kind of depends on, what maybe your parameters are and, and, and what your trade-offs you're willing to make, right? There's pros, but there's cons. Uh, what, what about anything else? Um, you know, in, in anything in terms of like a natural solution, obviously we have a solution with, that, that we would consider natural uh, to address this. Yes. And, and, and what you're talking about, Roger, supplements. And of course, natural supplements are also an option and, and really a good option. So the, the thing um, that you really want to look for um, is something natural with ingredients that help with the following. So relieving anxiety and stress, obviously. Okay, that's that's the, the key. Mm -hmm. Alleviating nausea often. So we talked about that in the car. But often when your pet gets anxious or stressed, they become nauseous. So you want to alleviate the nausea. Yep. Um, it's great to get something that calms their mind, you know, something that could even increase the levels of serotonin in their brain. That would be fabulous to do and mm -hmm. make them, you know, feel better and something that promotes relaxation and maybe even ultimately sleep. Cause isn't that the ultimate relaxation is sleep. Very true. It relax when I'm asleep, I'm relaxed. I can tell you that. I can tell you that too. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that's helpful. Um, so, you know, Pottery, we, we've got a natural supplement called Chillax. Um, you know, I, I actually give it to, uh, to Jojo almost every day because, as I mentioned, we actually have multiple of these issues. So even if we're not traveling every day, we, and even if there's not a thunderstorm every day, uh, there may be, you know, uh, strangers coming into the home or uh, us, you know, even out on walks. It calms her down more on walks to not be so aggressive, et cetera. So um, tell us a little bit about this Chillax. Um, and I don't know if you have a, a bottle to show, um, but if you do, if you don't. I don't know that I actually do this time okay. because I had to chillax my girls. I do that for these lunch and learns so you don't hear them barking. <laughs> so we don't hear them all barking. Do you, you hear them barking? Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's right. Well, tell us a little that. bit about chillax. It's, we know it's a natural supplement. Um, what else can you tell us about, about that? So, so as you said, it's a natural supplement and it does all the things that I just mentioned with no side effects and it works for both dogs and cats. So it's, it's really a versatile product. Um, it's perfect for those event based issues that cause your four leggeds to be stressed, right? So Chillax contains some really effective ingredients that work synergistically to keep pets calm. Some of these ingredients are the active ingredients that I'm going to talk about are um, hemp seed oil and hemp seed powder. Um, those are great ingredients because they reduce anxiety and discomfort for your pet. We also have passion flower, which also relieves anxiety, stress and tension, and it also promotes relaxation. Uh, we also include chamomile and ginger, um, those two alleviate nausea. So, you know, we're, we're, we're hitting everything, right? All, all right, these right, facets right. of the anxiety. Um, L-tryptophan increases the level of serotonin in their brain and helps to promote relaxation. Um, we also have valerian. Uh, that also reduces anxiety and promotes sleep. Thiamine and magnesium, which calm the mind. And melatonin, which promote relaxation and sleep as well, just like the valerian. Mm. And, you know, Roger, we have been getting really terrific results with chillax. You don't hear the dogs, right? You don't hear them. Six of them. You don't hear one. Um, pet parents have written many testimonials about how they finally found something to help their pets that they can count on, that they can trust, et cetera. This has actually been um, a really 
a phenomenal product and um and the the, the ingredients are are just really magnificent because they work on so many different levels well you're getting lots of love on facebook i don't know if you're, you're looking at these comments but there are a lot of people who i think have already and i'm sure a couple of these yeah. these quotes here that i'm that i'm looking at these these experiences because you know there there are a lot of people who i know are um you know backing up your words with their experience and yeah and i'm seeing yeah. pet household um it uh, it really does work for a whole variety of reasons, and one of the things that I think is is interesting, um, you know, I've heard our veterinarians uh, when they talk about this product and in so many of our pottery products, you know, they talk about a multimodal approach, and it's interesting when you talked about all those ingredients that you know, as I was thinking about those, and you were saying, okay, we've got, I think it was chamomile and ginger for the the, the nausea, and you've got. Um, you know, uh, valerian that, that reduces anxiety and promotes sleep. And, you know, you get, the, the, I can't remember what the ingredients were that calm the mind and, you know, uh, and, and, and melatonin that, that uh, promotes relaxation and sleep. And so you know, all these different things. And the, the, I think that the scientific phrase for that, because I've heard the veterinarians talk about this, is multimodal. And, and that's, you know, the reason why all of these ingredients are in the product. Obviously, you know, we, we could make a product with, with, with one or two ingredients and address you know most of the issues or some of the issues or for some of the pets. But what we've really tried to do with this product, and I, I'm just backing up what you said, Brooke, it really is a go-to product that can address all of these issues in a combined way. There's so many of these issues that are interrelated, right? The nauseous that comes from you know, uh, from, from traveling and from, uh, you know, being kind of an anxious stomach, uh, the, the, you know, the, the anxiety that, you know, that we can address when we're just more calm and, and, and maybe sleeping or, you know, uh, more relaxed and, and not as worked up. Uh, and they all work together in this multimodal way that yeah. um, really is why we see so many of these great testimonials here that, you know, it is a product that can, you know, just a great product to have on hand for any pet household. Um, it can. Dr. If we only addressed some of the issues, that's not how pottery rolls. I mean, that's not how we do things. We try and address as many issues. So the problem is solved and you don't have to have many different things that you give your pet for, you know, for anxiety or, or for, for anything. Now I see a question here. This would be great if, uh, from Tina. She says, I use it for my dog and do not see a difference. Is it safe <clears throat> to give them more than what it says on the canister? So can you help us uh, with that question? If, you, if you're taking the amount and you're not seeing the impact. Um, we give the guidelines as, as, as guidelines, as, as direction. Um, the product is very, very safe. Um, probably it's okay to give a little bit more. I'd love to know a little bit more about your pet how much they weigh, are they, you know, is it an older senior dog, you know, how, how old, you know, things like that type of pet. But, you know, yes, you could probably, you know, give a little bit more and try and see, you know, how that works. So, and, and the other thing I would say is give it earlier. So we say um, on the jar to give it 30 minutes in advance. I will tell you that um, it would not be a wrong thing to give it an hour to two hours in advance. Um, just to get them calm. Okay. Um, so that might be the first thing I would do is give it to them earlier. And certainly you can give a little bit more. Wonderful. That, that, I mean, you, can, you can give it a couple of times a day. You know, there's, you know, there's an amount that you can give in every 12 hours. Wonderful. It is one of the benefits of having an, an all natural product. Uh, give some flexibility. Obviously, the guidelines are there for reasons in terms of weight and the amounts of ingredients that, that are in them. But, you know, very different from a medication that uh, that might have other interactions. Um, so, uh, you know, appreciate those uh, who are also answering that question for. for it's, it's what's been tested and proven. Those are what those amounts are. You know, some pets do need a little bit more. Um, some of my pets need a little bit more different things, you know, so I, you know, I, I will do that, but you just want to, you know, be careful. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Use, use good judgment. Well, this is wonderful. You know, one of the things that, you know, again, as I think about this idea of, um, you know, we, we kind of teed this up about 4th of July anxiety. Um, you know, it, obviously anxiety is a year round issue for pets, um, but there is kind of a, a, a seasonal 
um, you know, uh, driver, you know, kind of a seasonal, um, uh, you know, trigger for, for anxiety that's coming up. And so we wanted to take the opportunity to, to share at lunch today some, some tips, you know, some, uh, some information that can help everybody be a little bit more aware on some of the triggers that may cause anxiety for your pet, some of the various solutions that are out there, not just pot tree solutions, but other solutions. But of course, I'll also share with you something that, that we feel very strongly about, an all natural supplement that, uh, that you know, called Chillax that really addresses in this multimodal way the, the, the various issues that uh, surround anxiety with dogs and cats. And this is one product that can be used for all dogs, all cats, for the variety of anxiety issues that they're dealing with. Uh, and we've had wonderful success with this. And I'll say the last thing that I'll share as the founder and CEO of the company is we have a 100% money back guarantee on all of our products, including the Chillax product. So the, the thing that I would encourage you, if you've watched this and you're thinking to yourself, wow, I've, I have noticed some anxiety in my dog or cat and, and uh, some of these, these topics that we've discussed, try it, right? Go, 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 uh, you know, get with the person who invited you, go to their website and try it. Um, try the Chillax and just see for yourself. And uh, I have no doubt you'll have experiences like many on this, this feed here who have shared their experiences that, that, that really this product has been a game changer for them and their pet families. And if for any reason that's not the case for you, we will just give you your money back. It's that simple. So there's really nothing to lose. Uh, Brooke, anything else you'd like to say in, in wrapping it up? Um, of course, I, I saw a question. Uh, can we? Can is it safe to use every day? Absolutely, completely safe to use every day. And um, we, you know, it, it's funny. I'm, I'm hoping. I mean, some people may really have gotten more out of this lunch and learn because they may not have realized that some of the things that they're seeing from their pets is ang actually anxiety, right? So I'm hoping that maybe we open some eyes or you know let you be more aware of of what your pet is actually showing you, and um, and that you guys can you know, whatever you need to do, but get prepared because July 4th is coming and you can help your, your BFF um, easily. There's, there's things out there to use. And if you try the Chillax, you, you really have nothing to lose. So. W wonderful. There's one last question here. Let's just briefly address if you can, Brooke, um, from Becky, is it safe for pregnant and nursing moms? Um, I believe I wish I had the jar in front of me, but I believe what we say on the jar um, is that it has that has not been proven. So use caution. Um, but you can always ask if you want to your veterinarian, you know, about these particular active. You want to look at the active ingredients. You don't really need to worry about the inactive ingredients. That's the inactive ingredients are really what I would term as like the cookie dough that holds it together. That's the chew. Yeah. But it's the active ingredients. So, you know, you could ask and say, hey, is hemp seed oil or hemp seed powder? Is that an issue? And I do want to make sure you guys understand that hemp seed oil and hemp seed powder, because your vet or someone might misunderstand, that is nothing to do with CBD. Okay. It is it, so, but there's so many terms for CBD that a vet might say, oh, that's CBD, you can't use it. And it has nothing, there is no, it's not CBD. There's no THC, which is the active ingredient. There's nothing in there that could that could possibly hurt your pet. Wonderful. So, not the CBD would either. But I'm just saying in case the vet had an issue. Well, th this is this is very valuable. I'm getting lots of comments here. I see that you know just this has been a helpful lunch and learn. I'm going to uh, finish it up with one uh, testimonial here from Jennifer Bench. Um, I think this is a great one, Jennifer. I've had I've several grooming customers that have. Uh, their pet have anxiety coming to get groomed and now they use the chillax and are very calm coming in now and it's wonderful i mean it really it, it not only is helping the pet obviously to feel more calm and, and and have a better experience it's also helping the pet parent it's also helping the groomer right? <laughs> i mean when we when we take uh you know notice of these these issues that our pets have and respond with with wonderful healthy you know natural safe solutions I mean, it really can be a game changer for the pet and the others in the pet lives, you know, in particular the pet parents and, 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 and pet care providers. So um, very wonderful. Uh, thank you, Brooke, for taking time at lunch to impart oh, your wisdom. We look forward to, to next week. I think next week we're going to be on Instagram. 
so we're going to try Instagram, and uh, and then not everybody's on Facebook, and not everybody's on Instagram. So we're going to go back and forth a little bit. So uh, pop over, see us on Instagram next Friday for a lunch and learn. Thanks for joining us, Brooke. Thanks everybody for tuning in at lunch, and have a wonderful weekend.